Good evening. It is July 24th at 8 o'clock in the evening here in the House of Representatives. We are here in special session today in the middle of the summer to vote on the agreement on public sector union wages and benefits between the unions and the governor. We are doing this before there has been a vote on any state budget for the next two years. Now, just to make sure that the importance of this is clear, uh, we are facing a $5.1 billion deficit over this current biennium. We have already started. We're already a month into it. Majority Democrats have still not proposed a full budget that tells us whatever happens to every town and city and goes through all of the line item details. Um, despite that, we're here today discussing what the public sector employees get and give. We are not here discussing what happens to the services and the taxes that affect every single taxpayer in the state. So when the, when the debate began, the majority leader told us that not voting in favor of this agreement, which is supposed to save $1.5 billion over the next two years and some beyond, not, he said that not voting for it would cause major dangers and damage to the state and that there was no alternative. Now, this evening, our minority leader, Representative Claritas, did propose to bring the House Republican budget to the floor. It's fully vetted. We have line item details, town details, and labor savings that greatly exceed those in this agreement. The majority would not allow that to happen. So when the majority leader said that this was going to be a good deal for the state, and that it was a good idea to vote for it. Well, where does that take us? Well, it, there's a couple of places it could take us. It's part of the governor's budget, which would push the costs of paying for a third of the teachers' pension contributions onto all the towns and cities. And as we know, that would cost every ting single town and city millions of dollars, which could only be provided by increasing property taxes on residents. Well, if we don't do that, then there's also the partial budget that's been provided so far, but not fully fleshed out by House Democrats, which would increase sales taxes by $800 million over the next biennium. Basically, this labor deal would lead in any case to draconian service cuts and to major tax cre increases again and again and again as pension costs continue to rise exponentially. Again, I'll say that tax increases as far as the eyes can see and with them major draconian service cuts. In other words, taxpayers would be paying more to get increasingly less and less. So today, those who vote in favor of this deal must know that for the next 10 years, because this contract would prevent any changes to labor costs, benefits, and wages for the next 10 years. So over those next 10 years, every single tax increase, every single service cut, and every single impossibility of decreasing taxes will be on the heads of those who vote for the deal today. And on your behalf, and on behalf of the taxpayers of the state of Connecticut, I will not be one of them.